elementary school type of crap. So you want to start creating gaming content for your YouTube, TikTok, or port? <clears throat> I mean, daily motion? I don't know, man. Well, welcome to my official everything you need to know to get started with video editing in Premiere Pro, also possibly other video editing software, the video. In order to use Premiere Pro, we first have to, well, open Premiere Pro. Whoa, what? The first screen here is pretty much the main menu for your projects. Wow. Since you're starting a new project, come on, you know which one it is. <laughs> come on, Zeph. It's new project. What are you, an idiot? Jesus. Title the project and select the location so you can find it later. Organization is half the battle when it comes to workflow and a good thing to get in the habit of early. Get the fuck out of here. After that, hit OK. The brand spanking new project will open up. If this is your first time opening Premiere, Are you sure about this? You'll probably have this window for Premiere Pro tutorials. I want to personally vouch for this tutorial as it helped me immensely when I was trying to take my baby steps into the program. I strongly suggest you consider it. That being said, who needs ya? We've got everything you need to know right here. Now go to the top and hit the effects tab to organize your windows into a way I personally prefer. You can always organize these later by dragging and moving the windows into different locations. With that done, we can officially start breaking down everything you need to know. Guys? It's my new girlfriend. The bottom right window is the project window. This is the hub for all the footage and sound effects you plan to use in your project. We can start by dragging your epic gamer clips into the project window. Whenever you want to put any files into your video, you'll generally drag the file into the project window to import it into Premiere. Once the footage is imported to your project manager, you've got mail. Drag and drop it onto the timeline. Bam! You got your video and audio files ready to edit. You can also directly place your footage onto the timeline, but hey, I just wanted to show you the project window in action. He's just standing there, menacingly. As with any job, you've got to use the right tools for what you want to accomplish. Put the screwdriver in the screwdriver hole and the hammer in the hammer hole. Oh, that's a lot of damage! You can see all your tools in this nifty little window right here. So, let's first talk about your tool belt. Your hammer and screwdriver are the select tool and the cutting tool, or otherwise known as the razor tool. You can switch to the select tool by smashing V on your keyboard, and the cutting tool by gently caressing C. The selection tool will allow you to click, drag, and move your footage, while the cutting tool will allow you to break the footage into smaller segments. When you first go through your gaming footage, it's best to find all the boring parts and cut them out. That's right, we don't want to see your one minute gamer face. We want to see all those spicy gaming moments. Just cut around the moment you want to get rid of. Click on the clip with the selection tool, hit delete. Click on the space that the clip used to be in and hit delete again. Now there's no space. It's like magic. Before we move on, there's a few other tools that are pretty important to mention as I use them frequently. The track select tool or A on your keyboard will allow you to select everything from the point you click onwards on your timeline. You can hold shift to make it one specific track. You can select the opposite direction by pressing both shift and a lastly this t symbol is for text you can access the tool by pressing t for text and then clicking in the preview window to place text you can use this for a variety of features like subtitles or just putting information in your video Effects are half the battle when it comes to editing. A lot of people enjoy those spicy effects that really zhuzh up the watching experience. Spicy. It's what I personally spend a lot of time doing while I'm editing because, well, I love effects. Just click on the clip in your timeline you'd like to apply the effect to and go up to the top right window. Click the effects control tab and you'll see a list of properties for this clip. You can scale in a clip, move the clip around, or change the opacity of your video. But let's say you're greedy and you want the world. Let's say there's a cool moment in your gameplay and you want to zoom in progressively to capture the moment better. Well, all you have to do is click the little clock to start creating keyframes. Think of these as little pins that tell the video where it needs to be whenever it needs to be there. You can set keyframes at the beginning of the clip and then go to the end and move the attributes to where you'd like them to end up. This will automatically create keyframes where your cursor is. You can also create keyframes of a moment by hitting this little diamond thing button right here. I use this whenever there's a specific moment I want to make sure stays in the same position, but I'm adjusting anything before or after. This also works in audio for any audio effects or volume changes. But yes, those can't be all the effects you can use in Premiere. What about the funny faces and the funny- Well, keep your pants on, buddy, because we're about to get saucy. You see this window right here? Yeah, the one that says effects? This right here is where the action is at. 
you'll get everything from audio effects to video effects to transitions. You can use the search bar to find any specific effect you want. All you have to do is find the one you want to use, drag and drop it to the clip you want to edit, and then adjust the properties in the effects control window. For video effects, I use a lot of distort effects, specifically twirl and spherize. Not much else. As far as audio is concerned, distortion and flanger are both nice. And if used tactfully, you'll really tickle your audience. So you spent hours, if not days on end, cutting, watching, pulling your hair out to finally have a timeline that looks like this. What do we do now with it? Well, I'll tell you. Go to the file drop-down menu, click export, and select media. Once this window opens, make sure you set your format to H.264. It's the best format for YouTube videos. Change the preset to high bitrate, and use output name to select the destination and name you want the video saved as. After that, hit export and you are done. It's time to party, baby. Depending on the size of your video and the specs on your computer, the export can take some time. Go take a walk, say hi to an old friend, make yourself a cake because you deserve it. Hopefully with this, you have the basic tools to start editing. There's a lot more to learn about Premiere Pro, but this should be enough to get you started. I love editing and I hope you have as much fun with it as I do. A lot of content creators I'm friends with dread it, but it will really save you a lot of stress if you learn to enjoy the process. It can be rough, especially when you start a YouTube channel to spend hours or days preparing a video only to have a few people watch it, especially when you're constantly watching or critiquing yourself. You need to make sure to focus on those small victories. Remember, YouTube or content creation is much like most things in life. It's not a sprint, but a marathon. If you stick with it long enough and consistently aspire to get better with every video you make, you'll get where you want to be. Nothing worth having comes easy. That being said, this is the first time I've done a video like this. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below and if this helped you out in some way, shape, or form. I'll see you all in the next video but until then make sure to sub like and comment if you'd like to see more yeah all right bye see ya i'm i'm going now all right